Okay, so uh, the rest of this is about enzymes, right? Enzymes are catalysts, something that helps speed up, change the rate of a reaction. And these are the kind of catalysts, the ones we call enzymes, that are proteins. That means their recipe is written in DNA. So this unit is the one that to me is most likely for question one to be based on uh, talking about an experiment, asking you experiment questions, asking you what happens if we change this or that. You're talking about how proteins work, what are proteins coded for, genes, DNA. We can have, we can fit like four different um, units into that kind of question. Okay, so uh, the re reminder that chemistry is all about collisions, right? Molecules must collide in order to react. So here we have the idea that the reactant molecules, even if they're going to end up losing energy, right? They first have to gain a little energy to get going. That energy is called appropriately activation energy. And then here we have that term in the syllabus. Um, one thing that can produce, that can um, provide this activation energy is heat, right? By increasing reactions, by increasing the speed of the particles, therefore increasing collisions. But if there's too much heat, that might change the nature, specifically the shape of these protein enzymes that are helping things along. And so that's no good. So the problem for life is how can we make reactions happen fast enough at temperatures that won't cause everything to break apart? So here we have the classic graphic way that enzymes help do that. And now we have this idea. You can be asked to describe slash explain how enzymes work in terms of energy and in terms of mechanics. We start with the energy. How do they do it? If this reaction these reactants to those products needed this much energy to get started but with the help of an enzyme it only requires this much energy then that is going to help this happen faster at a lower temperature less energy means also lower temperature right so explain how they affect the rate in the energy explanation they're talking about lowering the activation energy here we have the word facilitate in the syllabus, just like we had facilitated diffusion. Facilitate means help. And once again, if they use a word in the syllabus, they're going to use it in a question. Okay, so we have this substrate. Those are the reactants, right? We, ha we don't need more names, but we have it. Um, so then we have the substrate fitting to that part of the enzyme called the active site, right? And then what's the fit going to be due to shapes like puzzle pieces but also charge of both the substrate and the active site being compatible what's that mean positives and negatives matching up so that they um, attract okay so here we have an active site of an enzyme it's got little charges in it right here we have a substrate that's got a little polarity charges plus minuses pluses here and there right and for this particular substrate, this particular active site is the right fit, and that is called specificity, right? This is a key aspect of enzymes for every reaction, this being broken into these, in this case, right? There is a specific enzyme that works to help this one happen, and the work is because, I mean, the help is because it can fit into the active site. Key idea. As enzymes help reaction happen, lots of things change. The enzyme actually changes shape for a little while. However, the enzyme, when the reaction's done, the enzyme's the same as it was before, ready to make another reaction happen. The reactants have changed into products, but the enzyme hasn't changed into something different. Okay, so um, here now are the mechanical ways that enzymes help to do this energy thing, lowering activation energy. What's common about these two is that in both cases, the substrate's going to fit into the active site, right? But what's different about how it helps anabolic reactions happen compared to catabolic, put together reactions compared to take apart reactions, is that for the put together reaction, 
this enzyme is going to hold these reactant substrates in the right position. What again causes the bond to form? A collision, but now it can be a gentler collision at a lower activation energy, meaning temperature, right? Like body temperature. So how does it help a break apart reaction have? By when it grabs the enzyme and changes shape, that idea called induced fit, right? It actually physically bends the, the specific bond that's going to be broken, making it easier to break. How? By a collision. Okay, so now we talk about um, what happens if something disrupts or changes um, some of the components of this biological system that we're talking about. How can that increase or decrease the rate of reactions, basically, is where we're going here, right? How changes to the structure of an enzyme can affect its function. This theme goes throughout, you know, all of life, all of biology. Um, so what can cause this enzyme to get out of its natural shape, denature, right? Well, one thing is the temperature gets too hot. Another thing is the pH changes too much, okay? These set the stage for experiments where you see what happens when you change these two, making these two the independent variable and something about the reaction rate, the dependent variable, okay? In some cases, when an enzyme has its shape changed, that can be reversed, but in other cases not. Okay, so here we look at temperature specifically, right? What do higher temperatures do? They increase, again, the speed of particles, right? Increases the frequency of collisions, therefore increases the reaction rate. That's the explanation for what's happening in this part of this graph. But then once you get to a certain temperature, which will be different for different enzymes, this temperature called the optimal one, right? Now, those same collisions, which were good for reactions happening, are beating this enzyme up, changing its shape, and this fall off the cliff decrease in reaction rate is evidence for how much enzymes help. Because what's still happening here? More collisions. It's still getting hotter. You're still getting more collisions. But now the collisions are not being helpful because you have taken out the help of that enzyme, right? So, again, this is classic experiment stuff. They want you to be able to identify experimental procedures, including appropriate controls. What if you are, what if you are doing an experiment to show how uh, temperature affects uh, the reaction rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction? What would a control be? Well, you can't eliminate temperature. You can't eliminate the independent variable, your kind of classic uh, control group but you can eliminate the enzyme, right? That would be like a negative control. What would a positive control be? I think in this case, it would be to have a group where you do um, just kind of the average temperature, which would like be body temperature. You're talking about, you know, enzyme catalyzed reactions. So those would be, I think, your positive negative controls in that kind of experiment, okay? Here, they tell you they might want you to identify the control in an experiment that you designed or an experiment that they've told you about. But here they tell you they also might want you to explain why that is a control. By removing the enzyme, for instance, your explanation would say, I have made a situation where you can compare the effect of the enzyme to, because this reaction might still happen a little bit without the enzyme. So to know what difference the enzyme makes, you can remove the enzyme in one of your groups. Other things to say in an experiment, I'm going to do lots of repetitions, right, with lots of trials, the, the need for repetition. Okay, so how does pH affect, right? Well, pH is all about charges. See this equation in your, in your um, uh, equation sheet, your whatever you call that. Right. Um, it tells you also, however, that they're not going to ask you to do the math about this. But what they want you to know is pH is about hydrogen ion concentration slash hydronium ion concentration. Uh -huh. And the relationship is negative as the pH goes up. That means this concentration goes down. Right. 
this concentration goes down means more basic right higher pH number lower that more basic so what difference does that make well here we have a similarity with the temperature idea different enzymes have different optimal pHs but here we have a quite different reason why from this pH to that the slope is going up even though the graphs look the same right this is not about more collisions or less collisions right collisions are all about temperature and something about experiments is if you're doing an experiment to see the effect of this independent variable pH in this case you are expected to have all the rest of them stable controlled right so the temperature is the same for all these pHs all your little experimental setups that means the number of collisions is the same the difference maker is going to be now only the shape of the enzyme and the shape of the enzyme is going to be the right shape only at a certain pH where all these charged things are tugging and pulling it into just the right shape and if you increase the number of protons or decrease the number of protons the tugs and pulls are going to take it out of a shape that fits okay the third thing that can affect rate right is substrate concentration right so if that's our dependent or independent variable on your typical graph on the x-axis right we have the idea that once again more of that causes more reactions to happen right in this case the explanation is again about collisions but unlike temperature not because the particles are moving faster it's now because there are more particles therefore there are going to be more collisions and here we also have an optimum an optimum substrate concentration where these reactions are happening as fast as they can but in this case we are going to have lots of optimums because there's nothing about adding more substrate that is going to change the shape of the enzyme which in those other graphs caused this reaction rate to jump off the cliff right here adding more substrates is simply gonna make no difference because the enzymes are here are working as fast as they can a a thing called turnover capacity right so this graph unlike the others will plateau at a certain point okay so now we have some kind of substances not pH, not, um, not, not temperature, and not the substances that are substrates, but other kinds of substance which might inhibit or they might activate and make these enzymes work better. The focus is usually on inhibitors, though, as you can see right here, competitive inhibitor molecules, non-competitive inhibitors. This picture is of the competitive variety. Why that word? Because this substance is competing with this substrate for the active site right these things are often poisons like mercury for instance so here we have a non-competitive inhibitor instead of latching on to the active site this thing latches on to an other site and in doing so changes the shape of the protein including its active site so it doesn't fit again this is inhibition right this would be called an inhibitor but it's also possible that this made this active site the right shape, in which case we call it an activator. It's less likely that you'll get questions about activators, but you know, just know that that's also possible. So here we have the idea that reversible inhibition, this thing going in and inhibiting, then coming out and, and making this active again, is a part of a naturally evolved regulation of a mechanism of chemistry happening, okay? I didn't point my hat out here. I got a nice classic hat on. I got, ooh, it's a really classic shirt. This goes back to like the 1990s. Anyway, here we go. So just a couple more, right? We have that other site that an inhibitor or an activator might bind to is called allosteric. Allo means other, right? So here we have many times, this classic example, the end product of a reaction pathway where you have in this case five different reactions starting out with a chemical changing it to another one and another one and another one and another one and finally that one where this end product itself is the right shape to fit into an other allosteric site and make this enzyme not work 
which enzyme is the most common one to evolve to have been inhibited in this way. It's one of the first couple, in this case, the very first one in the pathway. That effectively and very efficiently shuts this pathway off when you've got enough of the product so that you don't waste reactants and energy making product that you already have enough of. So this is a, um, you know, all in this syllabus objective. This is a very common way to regulate chemistry in a cell, okay? But later in unit six, we're getting to a way of regulation that involves genes. This, as you can see, doesn't involve genes. It involves the product of genes, so to speak, these proteins, but it doesn't involve genes. So you would not call this gene regulation, even though you would definitely call this regulation. And this particular example is one of the most common called negative feedback. Why? It's because this thing that's doing the controlling, when the amount of it gets up, it itself causes something to happen that causes the amount of it to go in the opposite slash negative direction.